Should you download Filmic Pro or ProTake? What are the differences from one app to the other? Well, let's take a look at how each app is used so you can see for yourself. So let's run through each app's interface so you can get a better feel for what each app offers. Plus, stick around to the end. I'm going to share with you the two biggest differences that led me to go from one application, drop it, and go to the other. Let's start with Filmic Pro first, since it arrived on the scene first. As far as price goes at the filming of this video, it's going to cost you about $14.99 to download. Not just that, in order to unlock things like filming in flat and log, which you might wanna do if you're going to be color grading and color correcting, in order to open up the cinematographer kit, you're going to need to pay an additional $13.99. I'll show you more on that in a sec. So let's take a look at the app itself. So as soon as you open the Filmic Pro app, this is basically what you'll see. However, there is no image here. I've kept it black, so it's easier to see what I'm doing. Now, the first thing that I want to do to show you is here at the bottom the little gear icon. Let's take a look at the settings menu. There's several things in here, but we're not going to go over them all. Let's just look at the things that would probably most interest most people. So at the top left, we have resolution. Here at the top, you can choose the ratio for your screen sizes. And toward the bottom here, I have 4K at the moment. You can choose the different levels of resolution. For example, 720, 1080, and what I would normally use the 4K. If you're using this as far, as far as film quality goes, go with the highest, which is Filmic Extreme. Outside of that, we have your frame rate. You can choose uh, from 24 to, to 240. 120 and 240 are grayed out at the moment because I'm in 4K. However, if you go down to 1080p, you will have these two other options. You can use audio in different ways. Uh, you can choose your device. Now you can choose to save to the camera roll or not. It's up to you. Um, and there are a few other things as well that you can choose from that we're not going to take a look at. You can give those a, a look later if you download this app. There are presets on the right if you choose to do so. A few things in the center that we're not going to go over. Uh, at the very bottom left, stabilization. Your video will be a little more stable with it on. Camera. I have three lenses I can choose from. My ultra-wide, my wide, my tele-lens, tele and my selfie. The zoom and the double-take uh, we're not going to get into. Zoom is pretty much just uh, zooming into one of your lenses. Double-take is a different application that you can check out later to where you can film one forward and one backwards. Torch is the brightness of your camera's flashlight. And as far as guides go, you can turn on your grid lines to have them off or on. I always suggest having them on. Okay, from there, let's go to the bottom left. The bottom left, we have the imaging panel. Here you'll have three major areas. At the top is your white balance. You can do auto white. You can have white balance locked, or what I would suggest, white balance auto lock on record. In the center, you have different levels of tone and you can uh, record a natural, dynamic, flat and log V2, which is especially nice for color correction and color grading. At the bottom, we have our color behavior where you can adjust the saturation and vibrance. Next along here, we have automatic and manual. So right now you can see I'm moving this circle in this box. The circle is for your exposure. You can click on that and it will lock exposure. You can click on the box and it will lock focus. However, for manual control, if we click on this little circular button right here, you get the same control, but to a higher level. On the left at the top where it says 2017, we can scroll through these this wheel here and at the top it's changing your ISO the lower the ISO uh, the, usually the higher quality that you're going to get as far as data but uh, the lower light you'll have 
At the bottom, we have your shutter speed. General rule of thumb, uh, whatever frame rate you're using, one divided by two times that frame rate. So maybe if I'm uh, filming in 24, I'm gonna click lock right here at the top on ISO and I can move my frame rate up and down. I'm sorry, my shutter speed. And I might want to go to one over 48. And you can get out of that just simply by pressing the manual control button again. Now, what's interesting here on this A, this is your live analytics. You have four options here at the top. Starting on the left, you have your zebra stripes. This helps with over and underexposed areas. It'll show them by zebra stripes. The next button is clipping. It pretty much does the same thing. It helps you show, helps show exposure or data loss, underexposed and overexposed areas where there might be data loss. The next one is false color. It looks like a sun. This shows you a complete exposure profile. And to the right is focus peaking, which would indicate areas that are in focus. And to the right, you can see the volume is bouncing up and down. And with manual control, you have your focus that you can move in and out and your zoom if you want to zoom as well. Now, at the very bottom center, you will have the timing, your battery, and, and it tells you at the uh, whatever frame rate in resolution you're using. But if you click on it, you have one, two, three different histograms. So for Filmic Pro, this is pretty much what you can go through on this application. However, Pro Takes price at the time of this filming is a little bit different. Initially, it's free, but of course, if you want to use the manual mode, which you're going to want to do, yep. it's subscription-based, and that price is $19.99 per year. Let's take a look at ProTake's user interface. So as far as ProTake goes, this might be what you first see when you open up your screen. However, I don't have all of the uh, controls on. So this button here on the right toward the bottom will show us, will display our controls. And everything's laid out here for you. It's kind of nice in my opinion. And as far as ProTake goes, basically going to have four categories. And I'm gonna push this little button that says Pro at the bottom. It might say something different when you first see it, right here to the left of the record button. These four areas are Auto, Pro, Dual, and Portrait. Now Auto, it's basically the same thing that you would have on your native app. So we're not going to go into this. However, Pro is your manual control mode. To go over this, let's start at the top left. Here we have resolution, and you can choose 720, 1080, 4K, along as well as a few other things. To get out of that, just simply push somewhere in the open area in the center, and it'll go back to the normal view. Next, we have our frame rate. I'm filming at 24 frames per second. You have other choices. You also have a time lapse choice as well. As far as shutter speed, you have several choices as well. Since I'm filming at 24 frames per second, I should probably go to 1 over 48. ISO, you can auto uh, exposure and have it automatically choose the exposure level or you can manually adjust it, which is probably what you want to do. With your white balance, you can do the same thing. You can click auto. And if you want, you can click on these other options to the right. For example, overcast, daylight, shade, fluorescent, and tungsten. However, I would probably just suggest hit record lock. With record lock, your white balance will be locked, so there won't be any fluctuations as far as white balance goes. And you have your lens. With the iPhone 11 Pro, I have four lenses, one facing me and three facing outward. I have my selfie, ultra wide, wide, and tele. So I usually film in wide. Now, at the top still, to the right, we have a grayed out smiley face. This is a beauty feature that there's no reason for me to use it. I think I'd need more than a camera to help me with this. <laughs> However, it's grayed out because I'm filming at the moment in 4K. If I lower it to 1080p, then it would become available. Next, we have the colorful circle. Here you can choose different looks. 
At the moment, it's in off. However, you could choose log if you're more into color grading and color correction. And there are a few other features or choices as well. However, I like to stick to off. Then we have a grayed out play button. This is where you would access your files if you are saving to the application itself. However, my video files are saved to my camera roll. And then next we have our gear button, which is our settings. In settings, we start with record. There are a lot of options here. Let's just go over a couple, specifically in the center. Now, both applications, Filmic Pro and ProTake, allow you to fill film in the horizontal and vertical mode. But let's look at stabilization. You have off, standard, cinematic, and extreme. Um, uh, you might wanna just stick with standard. Toward the bottom, we have HDR, high dynamic range imaging. Uh, it's a preference. I usually keep it off, but some of you, if you are familiar with this, might want to go with auto. And you have the choice of saving to camera roll, to the app itself, or both, but I like to the camera roll. Next, we have data. Again, a lot of information. Let's just look in the center with video encoding. Your choice is most compatible or high efficiency. High efficiency, you will save on mem memory, but with most compatible, although it will use more memory, it will, as it says, be more compatible with, with online platforms. So I would suggest stick with your H.264 most compatible format. Now, if you have presets or you wanna create them, you can do that here. If you have any accessories like a gimbal, you can connect those here. And then the next button, ProTake Plus, is just your personal information. In the center left, we have the same thing that you would see pretty much with Filmic Pro. Your shutter speed and ISO can be adjusted here manually. To the right, the same thing as well. Your zoom and focus can be adjusted here manually. To the bottom left, we have a few histograms. Then we have our audio, battery life, minutes left, your flash on or off. In the very center, the recording data and time. Then to the right, we have our grids. You can change your aspect ratio if you want. You can create a safe area if you wanted to, but I find this unnecessary. You can do this in uh, production, in your editing. And with others, you can choose your thirds, crosshairs, or horizon. Horizon is uh, for leveling. I don't find it necessary. Crosshairs, I don't find necessary. But I do like my grid lines. They do come in handy for composition as well as other things. Next, we have the same thing that we saw earlier as far as live analytics go. We have our zebra, on or off, false color, on or off, and focus peaking on or off and you can set it to auto to help you out if you want but i don't find it necessary which brings us back to the button here pro now the next two options are dual and portrait dual gives you the option of filming both forward and backward at the same time i've never used it i don't find a need to but who knows maybe you would and finally is what i think is particularly interesting about this application portrait mode this allows you to get a narrow depth of field look that you would normally not be able to get from a camera. That means that the subject or possibly you will be in focus, but the background will be slightly out of focus, giving a more cinematic look. So there you go. That's basically what you'll see if you're in the ProTake application. So I started out with Filmic Pro. It's a fantastic application. It really gets the job done. But since I've made a change, I've moved away from Filmic Pro to ProTake for two specific reasons. Number one, ProTake's user interface is just simpler and more intuitive. The overall design is simply better, at least in my opinion. What about you? What do you guys think? Leave a comment below. Okay. Number two, what a smartphone is essentially unable to do is get that narrow depth of field because the sensor is just too small to take in the light. However, with a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, you're going to be able to get that, that narrow depth of field 
which essentially keeps you or the subject in focus, but the background slightly blurry and it's all under your control. That way it separates the subject, yourself most likely, from the background. It looks also more cinematic. However, due to some interesting technology through ProTake, for example, AI and a few other high-tech things, ProTake can simulate that narrow depth of field with their software. And you do that specifically by using their portrait mode. This will be best if you have a more advanced phone like the iPhone 12, but I'm using the iPhone 11 Pro right now, and this is what you can get. It isn't perfect, but I expect it to get better as more updates are rolled out. And this technology is just one more step toward making smartphones your go-to device for filming. And links to these apps can be found in the description below as well. So if you've been considering an application like ProTake or Filmic Pro for your filming, I hope that this video has been of value to you. And if it has, I sure appreciate a like. It really helps the channel. Okay, guys, take care. Good luck. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.